Guys, welcome in to another NFL Fantasy Top 5 video for 2022. And guys, this time we're going over my top five receivers I am not interested in drafting based on their current draft position. Here as we see these mock drafts, their ADP, who are some of these guys that just are going simply too high for me to even look at. I'm also kind of weird when it comes to fantasy where there are certain receivers, certain running backs that I just refuse to draft ever. And I've been playing fantasy football since 2012. It's just something I do. I'll explain kind of why it's like that when we get into this uh, top five list. But guys, kicking it off with number five. These are wide receivers I'm just not interested in. It is Hollywood Brown currently going in the mid-fifth to early sixth round. That is just way too high of a price tag for me. Now I understand people saying he's going to Arizona Kyler Murray's a little bit better, you know, thrower of the football than Lamar Jackson. DeAndre Hopkins is going to be out the first six games. But guys, when you're talking about investing a fifth or a sixth round pick, this guy will very likely be your flex. He's way too inconsistent for me. Just a receiver, you know, you're basically hoping for the 75-yard touchdown. And if you don't get it, you're probably getting three catches for 42 yards. Let's be honest. That, that, that's the thing with Hollywood Brown. And this is a guy that's going to depreciate as the season goes on with the addition of DeAndre Hopkins after a six-game suspension. Now what you might be able to do is take advantage of the fact that he's going to be getting more targets and then trade him in week five or week six. But if you're playing in a league where people know that DeAndre Hopkins is coming back, there's just not a lot of value. Round five, round six, I'm not interested. Round seven, I'm not interested. Round eight, I'm not interested. Round nine, guys, I'm not drafting Hollywood Brown. I don't like those type of receivers where you have to rely on you know, a 70-yard touchdown to save your week. If he doesn't get that, he's probably putting up seven or eight points. And again, guys, this all these top fives are based off of 12-team leagues, one-point PPR, which is the most standard thing you can do. I'm just, just Let me just say that, uh, you know, as a qualifier here. But Hollywood Brown comes in at number five. He is now a member of the Arizona Cardinals, so we will see how he does. Uh, moving to number four, it is going to be T. Higgins currently being drafted in the third round of 12-team leagues. And guys, drafting a receiver in the third round you know, when you're investing that high of a pick, I don't want a wide, wide receiver too. I mean, it's it's extremely clear Jamar Chase is the best receiver on that team. If I'm drafting a receiver round three, I'm not drafting a guy that's going to receive, you know, a minimal target share. Now, he will get his targets. He will score. You know, he had 1,000 yards last year, six touchdowns. Maybe he's due for some positive touchdown re regression. Um... But overall, guys, I don't think Joe Burrow is going to have nearly as good of the season that he had last year, just my opinion. Uh, he's still a good quarterback, but T. Higgins, again, it's the idea that I'm going to draft a number two wide receiver in the third round. I want a bigger target share if I'm investing a third round pick into a wide receiver. So if T. Higgins was there in round, you know, late round four, early round five, I would love it. I have nothing against T. Higgins. He's a great number two. The issue is that's a really high investment to be making in a guy that you know is going to be getting less targets than another player in that offense and then you've also got Tyler Boyd sniping targets away as well along with Joe Mixon out of the backfield uh, so T Higgins it has more to do with him being drafted really high third round not interested personally he's a guy I'm not looking at at all when it comes to 2022 if for whatever reason he falls really far obviously I'm going to draft him but the point is, if you're playing in leagues, he's not going to fall to like the fourth round. He's just going to go earlier than that, and I'm not interested in his value overall. So he comes in at number four on receivers. I won't draft. Moving to number three, it's going to be Mike Williams. So guys, this is another one of those receivers that's just extremely inconsistent. Last year, if I remember correctly, he started off the year on fire, had about five straight weeks of horrible games, and then finished the season strong. He's currently going in round five. You know, that's not a terrible value for Mike Williams, but guys, 
I have this weird thing where there's certain guys I won't draft. I don't know what it is, but Mike Williams is one of those guys I'm just not interested in drafting. Keenan Allen is going, what, round three in many, maybe late round two, early round three. His, uh, you know, his uh, other receiver in that offense. But yeah, Mike Williams, very inconsistent. If you're drafting him, especially in round five, he's either your wide receiver two or your flex. It's not the worst position in the world to be in starting Mike Williams, I'll, I'll be honest with you, but he's a guy I just don't vibe with personally. I feel he's too inconsistent, so a guy I'm just not drafting. I'll be completely, I'm not drafting him. Even if he falls to the sixth round, I'll pass. Uh, so Mike Williams comes in at number three. That offense overall, Austin Eckler out of the backfield, Keenan Allen, uh, they're going to eat into his target share, obviously, and just more of an inconsistent year last year, although it was a breakout year. I understand that. He had a breakout year. It's great, but a guy that personally I am avoiding, Mike Williams, number three. Moving to number two, this is another guy I've, I've never drafted before in my life. Uh, it is Tyler Lockett. I just... I don't know what it is. I just, you know, Tyler Lockett, he'll put up 30 points one week and then he'll combine to put up 12 points the next three weeks. It only gets worse with the quarterback play going from playing with Russell Wilson your entire career. Now he's playing with Drew Locke and he's still going in round seven. So that's just way too high of an investment for a guy that's not even a wide receiver one. DK Metcalf is. The only thing, if you are drafting Tyler Lockett, you're hoping the Seahawks go full tank mode and trade him to a contender. But even then, I just don't like receivers that Tyler Lockett always does this where like week six, he'll have 43 points. And then the next five weeks, he'll, he'll combine to score 20 points. I just don't like receivers that get points like that. I want 15 points one week, 17 points the next week, 12 points the next, 18 the next. I'm fine with that rather than just scoring a bunch one week and then doing nothing. That's what Tyler Lockett always does every year. He always explodes. He has three touchdowns in one game and then does nothing for the rest of them. So Tyler Lockett, you know, I've been playing fantasy football since 2012. I don't know how long he's been in the league, but I've never drafted him in my, in my life. You know, I play four or five leagues a year. I've never drafted him. So just the guy, you know, it's just the thing with the, with the games, uh, with these receivers, it's tough. But Drew Locke, it's not going to happen with him. And he's not even, again, he's not even the lead wide receiver in that room. Will they trade for, I mean, you would think the Seahawks would not go into the regular season with Drew Locke as their starting quarterback, but who knows? Round seven is crazy horrible value. I would much rather draft Drake London in round eight, David Bell, you know, round 15, any of the rookies, Garrett Wilson, round 10. Come on, man. That's just bad value for, for Tyler Lockett, who's a number two wide receiver in an offense that's led by Drew Locke. I, why are people drafting Tyler Lockett in round seven? It's crazy. He comes in at number two, moving to number one. So this is actually an, another guy that I've never drafted in my life. It's Mike Evans. I just can't do it. Mike Evans, you know, with Tom Brady... He's going to put up stats. I think he's due for some major touchdown regression. He had 14 touchdowns last year, barely reached 1,000 yards. So in my opinion, they've also got Chris Godwin re-signed. They got Russell Gage as well. Leonard Fournette also out of the backfield. It's going to be tough to get for him to get a major targets, and he currently is going late round two, early round three. There is no chance. This is a guy I've never drafted. You know, I've been playing fantasy football Many years. Never drafted him in any draft ever in my life. I've probably done 300 drafts. Never drafted him. There's a vibe. There's something off with Mike. I, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's just something. And, and I know we had the touchdowns last year. I know Brady's back, whatever. It's like, I'm not investing a late second round pick into a guy you know, that's in an offense with so many other weapons. You know, I, there's just Jerry Judy in round six is a way better value. Uh, DJ Moore in round four, although people would argue DJ Moore's with a bad quarterback, but I think Baker Mayfield is an upgrade. There's just so many better values at the receiver, receiver position than Mike Evans in like round two or even round three. So that's another guy, Mike Evans, I am steering clear of. And he, I think, has had a few injuries the past two years. So that's just, that adds on to it for me. I'll steer clear of Mike Evans, especially round two, round three. Uh, it's not going to happen for me personally. But guys, those are my top five receivers. I am not drafting. 
Uh, Hollywood Brown coming in at number five. It's just the fluke big play. I don't want anything to do with it. You know, if you're new to fantasy, it can be very tough. You know, you see a guy like Hollywood Brown. He had a thousand yards last year, but do you know how he gets those yards? It's very, you know, you need a big play. If you don't get the big play, he's good. He's going to do nothing. Um, so if you're new to fantasy, Hollywood Brown, I would steer clear. T. Higgins, I just think it's too high. You know, if T. Higgins was round four, round five, I'd be open to it, but he's going round three, middle of round three right now. I will pass on him. Mike Williams, another guy going in round five, too inconsistent for me. Um, and then Tyler Lockett at number, Tyler Lockett, you should not draft. I don't, you know, the only way you draft Tyler Lockett is you're hoping, I mean, he gets traded to someone. That's basically it. And that is obviously not a way to draft players. I mean, there's been no rumors that Tyler Lockett is going to get traded. The only reason I'm saying that is, is because the Seahawks are starting Drew Locke. They might tank. They might trade DK Metcalf. He's due for a new contract after this year. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but Tyler Lockett's like 29 already. You'd think they would try and trade him and get some value. But there's no rumors that they're going to. So I would just not draft him. And then Mike Evans, round two, round three. He's the number one player. I'm just not drafting. I mean, I don't have a vendetta against, against him. But it's just there's certain players I just will not draft. I just don't like the way they get their points. Mike Evans, the 14 touchdowns, there's regression. There's no way he's getting 14 touchdowns in 2022, in my opinion. And even like a guy like Tom Brady, you know, everyone loves Brady, right? He's the greatest. But at some point, you're going to see regression with Brady. I mean, the guy's like 63 at this point. There's gonna. I'm not saying he's going to regress this year, but at some point, we're going to see it. I'm steering clear of that offense. The target shares are all whacked. Uh, you know, I love Chris Godwin, but I'm not drafting him either. Um, and I'm not drafting Leonard Fournette either. I know he had a great year last year, but that whole offense is just no thank you. It's just a mess. I know people love it, but uh, I'm just not drafting anyone from there. Uh, but guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.